the frigid opening of this week's Perry Mason, which has little to do with anything in the big scheme of things, but conjures up such a terrifying picture that I was truly surprised by, would be negligent of me if I didn't mention it. Camilla Nygaard is receiving cosmetic procedures in this scenario. She is daubed in a face mask, covered in linen with eye holes, lay out on her enormous bed with flowers covering her eyes, and stung around the eyes by bees, a common anti-aging treatment for wealthy lunatics. A price must be paid for living a long life. It seems to be looking ludicrous. How to explain the final scene of episode 8 of Perry Mason. However, I lie, and this is significant. Camilla will go to these extremes in order to appear a little younger. Now that we know what she would do to keep her riches in power, as we discovered in episode 7, it's not so hard to understand. Killing Brooks McCutcheon is a very minor crime. Della is reluctant to accept it as true. When Perry relays what Little told him, she finds it difficult to believe Camilla was behind the whole scheme since she was kind of captivated by her. However, there is no space for misunderstanding when Paul and Clara show up at the office with evidence that also implicates Camilla's lawyer, Phipps. Camilla has sinned. There is nothing that can be done since there are only a few hours left until a decision in the Gallardo case, but she is also extorting Hamilton Berger. How does Perry stall the legal process? Perry then stabs himself in the heart. Although he acknowledges that a harsh sentence may be meted out for his activities, he tells the judge that he still has the best chance of fairly defending the Gallardo brothers. In other words, Perry will serve four months in county jail instead of a mistrial. Additionally, the state will call two more witnesses, whom Perry should avoid cross-examining, to explain why the pistol was admitted into evidence. Even if it isn't the ideal result, it does buy some time. Leaning on Phipps is done first throughout the period, when Perry, Paul, and Della go to see him at home. They inform him he's rumbled and beg him to turn over the burger compromat lest he be charged and arrested right when Constance needs him. Phipps is forced to comply with his request and get the images and negatives of burger. However, when he sneaks around Camilla's opulent estate, he encounters her. When she mocks Constance, Phipps decides to deliver two enormous boxes to Perry instead. He exclaims, these are all pictures of Burger. With disbelief, no, Phipps responds. Perry receives what Phipps delivers. All of Camilla's extortion documents are in Phipps' payload, along with piles of pictures of everyone from Burger to Della and Perry horseback riding with his son. Ham is shown the images by Della and Perry, who also fill him in on the rest. He possesses all the necessary evidence to file a significant lawsuit against Camilla and expose the entire oil scheme. He makes a bargain, however, because he still needs Brooks McCutcheon's murder to be solved. If the shooter's sibling confesses, the other will be cleared. And the shooter would do 30 years in prison without the possibility of release rather than being hanged. Naturally, this is a payoff for Raphael's admission to the art school. Matteo will make the confession, and it just so happens that his wife and child are in town at the time, adding to the emotional impact. What was the verdict in the case? Berger is delighted to share this information with Milligan, which is fortunate as Berger has been acting extremely arrogantly during the entire episode, arguing in court with an outrageous racial tirade, and overall acting as though he had won the jackpot. But whether Milligan is exonerated or not, the trial still needs to reach a conclusion. Matteo admits his guilt and receives a 30-year term. Before leaving prison, he addresses the McCutcheon family in attendance and apologizes profusely, not that they deserved it. As promised, Raphael is cleared. Perry enters a jail. Perry does in fact go to jail after spending the evening with Della and bidding Miss Ames farewell but also see you later. Strickland, of all people, leads him straight up to the Hall of Justice's steps and apologizes profusely for bringing him there in the first place. He also gives him some smokes and gum and makes a commitment to start his bike once a week. Scenes of everyone else are intercut with Perry's induction procedure. To hide their true sexual tendencies from the media, Della and Berger are now in a relationship. Paul has promised to work with Perkins to gather information about the municipal councilmen who are opposed to his development plans in the city while simultaneously spending more time at home with his family. Raphael is a student at an art college. Little is stuck in Japan because the FBI wants to speak with him after the DAW. Launched an inquiry into Camilla and the oil scheme. Four months seems like a tiny price to pay for all the good Perry has been able to accomplish as he sits down in his prison garb with his toothbrush, gum and smokes and takes out a picture of him and Teddy riding horses. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to channel subscribe and click the bell, so you don't miss out latest videos of Media Breakdown.